So Google Kubernetes engine is the production grade managed service offering to run Kubernetes containers. And GKE basically simplifies the creation of Kubernetes environments and provides all the required functionality to keep containers up and running, like load balancing, auto scaling, logging, monitoring, security, auto upgrades of nodes, and so on. Later in our production lab, we'll look at how to set up a GKE cluster. Now let's look at the components of Google Kubernetes engine. In GKE, you start off with creating a Kubernetes cluster. A cluster in general is a collection of machine or nodes. A Kubernetes cluster consists of at least one control pane and multiple worker machines called nodes. The control plane and node machines run the Kubernetes cluster orchestrator system. Now in this diagram, you have a single cluster which comprises of two nodes. Each node runs two pods and each pod runs two containers. Pods are the smallest deployable unit in Kubernetes. Think of pod as a Kubernetes abstraction which wraps the containers. A container in the same pod will share the same resources and local network. And containers in the same pod can easily communicate with each other. Now you also define replication unit for pods in Kubernetes. In a production environment, you typically have multiple copies of pods running for load balancing and fault tolerance. And one of the common deployment question is, how many containers you can have in one pod? Usually the normal practice is one container per pod. And usually you might have a sidecar container being deployed like a service mesh proxy, which offers cross-cutting concerns like security, telemetry, logging in a unified way. Now, if we have many containers per pod, what happens? As pods are the smallest deployable unit, which are scaled, all the containers in the pods must scale up and down, regardless of their runtime requirements, which leads to resource wastage and increase in cost. Now to interact with the cluster, you have the kubectl command line tool, which is used to connect with the Kubernetes cluster, deploy applications and carry out the resource functions like viewing logs and so on. And in the production lab, we would go over the commonly used commands.